What's going on, YouTube, fam? This your boy Tony two times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Before I start, be sure to tap that like button. Definitely watch this video to the end to hear the full story and all the details in the case. For all the day one fam, welcome back. Thanks for tuning back into another episode. Y'all already know it's all love. If you're new to the channel and you're feeling the content, feel free to subscribe. Definitely hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. Let's get right into the story. When bringing a child in this world, we all hope for the best, that they are healthy and we could provide them a good and happy life. Especially if we didn't have the best or came from a certain environment ourselves. It makes you want to raise your kids different so they can avoid certain trauma as parents we might have went through growing up. For a lot of people, that puts them in grind mode, having another person to take care of other than themselves. With all the right intentions, that seems like a good way to be. But it's a flip side to that. You go out here and create a beautiful life for your children with everything they need and extras. But as soon as they get older, the needs turn into wants. Now your own child has become entitled and wants more and more from you, despite everything you already done for them. In some cases, your seed might even feel like they will be better off without you or want all your money and things you work for to themselves. Now you don't have a child, you have an enemy. And on this episode of Hood Tales, we will be taking it to Chicago, Illinois to discuss a case of an up and coming rapper that decided to plan a hit for hire plot on his own mother to flex and for financial gain. According to sources, Yolanda Holmes had came a long way. In 2012, she had worked hard to build a beauty salon in the north side of Chicago on 4141 North Broadway called Nappy Heads. That was a success. Yolanda took pride in helping her community from back to school drives for the kids, even helping up and coming businesses because she understood not having much and grinding from the bottom. Her main motivation for going so hard was her one and only child, a son named Cormaine Wilson. Yolanda wanted her son to have a better life than her and his father, who had a life sentence for two bodies. The single mother made sure to keep Cormaine away from the Chicago streets and gangs, kept him with her at the shop and the living arrangements in a nicer part of the city so he wouldn't follow his father's footsteps. Business was good for the 45-year-old mother, so she spoiled her son. From money, designer clothes, bought him a nice car, pretty much anything he wanted. As Coleman got older, he would focus on becoming a rapper and actor and started calling himself Young QC. His mother, who even helped him find a job to fund his career, was all for it and showed her support like always. But things would soon take a crazy turn. On September 2nd, 2012, Chicago PD were called to an apartment complex in a thousand block of West Montrose Avenue. As they arrived, they saw a man who looked like he had been struck with an object as he was bleeding. But in the bedroom was a woman who had been shot and sliced, unfortunately already gone at the scene. Police talked to the male victim who stated that was his girlfriend and identified the woman as 45-year-old Yolanda Holmes. He told them he was sleeping in bed when he heard Yolanda's phone ring. It was super early, so he was confused and startled. Not long after, a man entered the house, shot her, and he stated he tried to fight the man off, but was unsuccessful. The detectives talked to neighbors, but no one saw anything. The only lead was the boyfriend. Around 6 a.m., Cormain pulled up to his mother's place and was hurt and surprised once they told him what happened. While being questioned by police, the young man stated everyone loved his mother and he didn't know her boyfriend was back in the picture as they were on and off, physical things happened, and arguments as well. He also gave them his mother's cell phone and information. After that conversation, police focused back in on Yolanda's boyfriend and even took him in for a lie detector test. The results came back 
showing he was high or something, but with no evidence, he was never charged. Police hit a dead end. The community and people from the salon were in shock. The young mother was gone. Once the funeral came, family members found it strange. Cormain showed no emotions. Knowing he was his mother's pride and joy, but they chucked it up to maybe the young man was just in shock. But as months went by, Yolanda's bank accounts were hit for over $70,000. Also, Cormain had received payouts from her life insurance. It seemed weird. On social media, his posts were all with money, showing off watches, designer clothes, even a new car, dropping music videos and blogs, even showing himself going to a bank, taking out a lot of cash, throwing it up in the air so his so-called fans and supporters can feel good. People close to Yolanda thought it was crazy, his behavior and no tears about his mother. Almost a year would pass and investigators were looking into new leads. Surveillance video from the apartment showed a man enter the building with laundry detergent and clothes, leave out 10 minutes later with a new outfit on. Also, the boyfriend was still the suspect at the time. Even Cormain was pointing at him. The young man had spoke on his mother's passing prior to a funeral for a Chicago teen who lost her life, stating my mother was a neighborhood woman and a man took her life just to steal. Young QC, in which by this time, he was in full rapper mode, buying expensive puppies, still getting attention, throwing money to fans, would draw attention of Chicago police. Once they realized the night of the hit, Yolanda was on a different phone. Realizing Cormain only gave them one, but she had two phones. Looking into the information and calls, he was the last person she talked to before the incident. They brought him in for questioning, asked about all the money, the lack of emotion, and concern for his mother's case. After a long interrogation, and once police showed evidence, the young man admitted he needed money because his rap career wasn't paying. He wanted to keep up a certain image, so he enlisted the help of a man named Eugene Spencer to help him set up a plan to rob his own mother. According to young QC, he just wanted some money, but he didn't know things would go left. The tactics picked up Eugene, who denied the whole thing at first, before stating he went to visit the home and Yolanda's boyfriend attacked him. Scared, he did what he had to do to make it out. But once confronted with evidence, including police telling him they knew that was him who entered the building with the clothes, Eugene's story changed. He painted a picture of Cormain setting up a murder for hire plot, agreeing to pay him a few racks for his help to get rid of Yolanda. He told police young QC's girlfriend at the time picked him up, drove him to the house. Then the son called his mother, stating he was coming over, so she wouldn't be alarmed if someone entered the code to be buzzed into the building that early. Cormain allegedly stayed on the phone while Eugene went upstairs after shooting her he then told Eugene, make sure that B is gone. That's where the slice wounds came from to make sure the job was done. He then only paid the man $70. Eventually, both men and a young lady were charged with home invasion and first degree hit. On December 24th, 2013, young QC was picked up and booked into Cook County Jail. The young lady who stated she was used and had no idea about the plot was sentenced to 15 years and has since been released. But Cormain and Eugene both sat almost seven years before the case made it all the way to trial. Cormain had to face family and friends while being accused of taking the life of his own mother. Relatives stated he was a spoiled young man who went to private schools and had the best, but was never content, always wanting more. The judge would look at Cormain before giving him his time stating what he did was matriarchy, meaning taking the life of one's own mother. The young man was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Eugene would have the same fate, sentenced to 100 years for his role. Rest in peace to Yolanda. I send my prayers and deepest condolences to her family. My way of thinking wouldn't even let me imagine doing something like that to somebody who gave me life. I don't know what was up with her son other than he seemed ungrateful 
money hungry, and for real, trying to be something he was not. More of this story, sometimes love can lead to our own demise. This lady probably never thought in a million years her son would cross her for some bread. It's ironic. You give your child everything, a better life, so he wouldn't end up taking the wrong path, but he did anyway. Unfortunately, leading to Yolanda being gone as well. So we got to remember to succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale. Man, it's a crazy story messed up all around the board. You know, I heard about this story years ago before I even did YouTube. And the only thing I could get out of it, I felt as though maybe young QC felt like he had a chance to pop because this was 2012. This around about the time when Drill first hit. You had L.A. Capone, Tay 600, Chief Keith and them, FBG Duck, you know, Young Pappy. You had all them. So Shorty probably felt as though this is my chance to get on. His mother was already helping him fund his career, but maybe she was cutting him off or maybe she wasn't giving him enough. He just wanted the whole bag. He wanted to flex. I don't know why. You know, he was throwing money up to people saying they was his fans, but they saying his music wasn't even popping like that, man. Real messed up story, man. It's like a real life Frankenstein story, where it's though your creation turn around and eat you, and you ain't do nothing but try to do the right things, man. This woman tried to provide him a better life, had him in a nicer part of Chicago. This just goes to show you, it don't matter where you at, it don't matter how you was raised, man. Some people, they just do crazy things. But let me know what y'all think about this situation in the comments. Remember to be respectful. Y'all already know it's all love, fam. I appreciate you if you made it to the end. This is another episode of Hood Tales. This your boy Tony two times. I'm out.